Hi guys, welcome to today's video. This is gonna be a very quick one on redesigning IKEA's homepage. Now there's no real reason to redesign it, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. Just a bit of a technical exercise for myself, but also to show you guys just how powerful Flatsum is and the UX builder, and hopefully you can pick up some, some tips and tricks on how you can go and kind of build things like this yourself. So let's get it straight into it, not gonna muck about with a long intro. Okay, first things first, we're gonna check out some similar websites so we can get a, like a feel for what the kind of thing we're gonna go for. Really like this negative space on the banners and just kind of that well-placed text. So I've already taken this image from Ikea's website and lobbed the door out in Photoshop because I plan on using this as the banner image. Really, really happy with that already. Know that's going to look really good. So looking at a few different websites, there's one called Sklum or something. I don't know how you're supposed to say that. I really like this grid layout they have for the products, although I don't like how it protrudes from like the grey. Normally I'd quite like that, but in this instance, I don't really think it works. This bit here looks good as well, but I'm not probably going to get around to using that. Um, one other website I found which looks a bit too messy and a bit too busy for my liking. There's just a bit too much kind of text in, in not negative space, if you know what I mean. It's overlaying things. Okay, so here we are in our blank WordPress installation just on a local environment that I've set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and change the layout settings. Now, by default, Flatsome sets this to 1080 pixels and I think it's a bit too small. So I'm just going to up that to about 1250. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into editing the header. Before I design any pages or anything like that, I think it's really important that you've got like an, an idea of what the header will look like because I think that as it's the same on every page, albeit it might be transparent on some pages, I think it gives you a really good idea of what the website is gonna look like and how it's gonna kind of feel. Um, I'm actually gonna stick with this 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 default preset. I think it works really well. Uh, I'm just gonna find the IKEA logo here. Um, oh, no, there it was. Um, get that IKEA logo in and then we can already start seeing how this is gonna work. Just increase the logo container width. I think because it's a CSV, uh, SVG file that I have here, it's being a bit strange, uh, but it doesn't really matter. It's a decent enough size. It's not a problem. Okay, I'm just gonna jump into the menus and I'm just gonna put some dummy items in there. Um, again, it just gives me a better idea of how that's gonna look, whereas like kind of assign a theme options thing there, the placeholder is really, really off-putting. So I'm just gonna chuck in a few dummy things. I'll speed through this. You don't need to watch me doing that. Okay, great, so next up, I'm gonna go through the colors. Again, really important to get these set straight away. So I'm just gonna find out what the uh, IKEA colors, their actual like kind of hex codes are so we can steal those and get those in there. As for font, IKEA use like a special like Futura font. Can't be bothered with that, so I'm just gonna put in, um, I, I'm just gonna see if it's there, but it's not. So I'm just gonna put in like Open Sans. Okay, great, so moving forward from typography, I'm going back into colors. I'm gonna change the base color to a solid black. Um, and headline color, I'm gonna move just above. Normally you kind of keep them gray, they just look a bit better than solid black, but with this kind of typeface and the way, what I've got in mind, I think it's gonna work really well. So here we are, we've got some dummy items in, so we've got an idea of what the header's gonna look like, so let's jump into building this page. So as we've already discussed, I really wanna go with this, like, this big banner at the top with a lot of negative space, so I'm gonna throw that image straight in. The one I've already photoshopped, as you can see here, to get rid of that door, leave me lots of negative space to put in some text. Um, really great image for this. I think it's going to work well. Funnily enough, it's the, it's the first image you come to when you visit IKEA's, IKEA's website, so that's great. Make it a little bit taller just to take up a bit more space. Normally, these kind of banners, I go full width, so there's no kind of white space on the left and right-hand side. Um, but I think for this kind of design and the, and the language that this kind of this sort of Swedishness evokes, I think it works way better um, actually not being full screen here. So I'm just playing around um, with the text and things. I think dark. I think lights just gets lost a little bit too much, um, which is a shame because it works quite well. Okay, we'll come back and finish off that banner later. Let's just move on further down and get started with this grid layout. I think, I think I'm gonna go with grid eight. I think grid eight is gonna work really well for us here. Put in a little gap between the two, really, really open that white space out. Like the space as it is default with that 30 pixels would kind of be what I would go for normally, but I'm gonna space it right, right out. Just gonna reference this other website again, have a quick look. This is kind of what we're going for with the gray tiles and then the images. I think that's gonna look really good. Okay, just on Ikea's homepage here, I've just noticed there, make everyday life at home more beautiful. I'm gonna definitely steal that and put that on my, my banner text because that's gonna look really cool. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that paragraph text as well because it just looks way cleaner like this and really increase the spacing there between my new headline and that button. Again, more, more negative space, the better. 
Okay, I'm actually gonna adjust the line height. I'm just gonna do some inline CSS. Sounds scary if it's the first time doing it. It's really not. All it is is inside those little HTML tags. I'm just gonna put a little style thing and increase that line height because the text is way too close together. Again, more negative space. So I'm just gonna head over to Ikea, steal some of their product images again. Um, and then eventually I'm gonna end up Photoshopping out the backgrounds because none of them are PNGs. But again, fast forward, fast forward for all of that, you don't need to see it. Okay, and we are back ready to start editing these grids. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a banner on every single one of them. Um, and then like I said, I'm gonna have a really light gray background. I think 242 is a really nice color where it's really subtle, but works works well enough that, you, that it kind of differentiates itself from the plain white background. Move the text box down here, change it to dark. And again, get rid of that paragraph text. Too busy, more negative space. So let's go ahead and get my first product uploaded. I'm not really doing this in a, in a much of an order because obviously they're not real products or anything. You'd take more care to design this grid around the products that you wanted to push and so on if you were actually doing this in real life. I'm just gonna put them in whatever kind of suits. Um, so here we go, here's some weird cabinet that they undoubtedly have a ridiculous name for. I'm gonna shift this way over to the right and then the text box way over to the left. Now I'm just having a bit of a play here um, until I actually figure out, do you know what? I'm just gonna put like a one word title in like the, this other site has. Initially here I go to Ikea and I take the actual name of like Ivar or whatever. I told you that have a ridiculous name. Um, but actually I end up just going back and putting cabinets or something in anyway. So same kind of thing. Make the, change the textbook width, keep it as far, far to the left hand side as I can, all the way down to that bottom left hand corner. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward through all of this. It's really quite repetitive. So I'm just gonna skim ahead until I've got the entire grid done. And there we go, there's our grid. Looking really, really good already with the banner as well. I'm really liking how this is turning out so far. I think this is gonna be a really good looking page when we're finished with it. So let's head back over to those websites that we're kind of taking some inspiration from and see what they've got going on. Again, if you look here, all of this kind of almost disjointed alignment is kind of like almost textbook what you shouldn't be doing. Like if you look at any kind of UI and web design fundamentals, it will tell you that alignment should be like all down the same line and that not here, not with this kind of design. And that's why I think it is quite fun. So I'm gonna adopt this idea here of, this, of the text on the left and this big image on the right. What I am gonna look for, is one of those kind of hot point images that they have where they have those little checkers that you can click and that takes you to different things because that is a feature in Flatsum. I don't see it used very often, but it looks really, really good, um, especially when we get all the points on this one image. So I'm actually gonna end up stealing one of Ikea's images um, that they use with those little hot point things on there. I'm gonna use one of these. Okay, I had to do a bit of fiddling in Photoshop because it was a weird file type. But here we go, here's what the image looks like. And again, you can see what I'm trying to do with this, this padding on, on this text. I have a bit of a play and I try and get it in a place that's a bit unconventional. Because um, right at the top, kind of aligned along the top would be kind of where you'd expect it almost. So I'm trying to play with padding and really push it a little bit further down the page and really screw with, with almost like your, your expectation of what you would expect to see in these kind of designs. Again, looking at this website, you can see where I'm getting that from, that it's all kind of a bit disjointed and a bit overlapping and all the spacing isn't equal, but it works. I don't know why, because <laughs> it shouldn't, but it does. So I have a play at the bottom and I kind of like it at the bottom here, but actually... Again, you'd almost expect to see it at the bottom um, or the top. And I don't like it, kind of there's this white space there of kind of nothingless. It looks a bit weird, not a big fan. So I end up moving it back further up to the top, but with a big, big chunk of padding up there to bring it back down a bit. Again, negative space, weirdly executed. Love it. Okay, here I just realized I made a small mistake. I added that image in as an image first whereas I need to do it as a banner element because then I can add in those hot points that we talked about earlier so here those those are obviously you can put a link in I'm not do that because they're not really going anywhere um, or you can actually link to a product if you've got WooCommerce and everything installed but all I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a bit of text in there and I'm just going to put some generic labels on them um, and then shift them about the image so they look the part but in truth it's not really going to work because um, again I'm only doing the home page I just want to do this as a bit of an exercise I'm not going to waste hours of my time making fake products for a fake website okay let's take a look at what we've got so far I think it's really really coming together especially with this image with these hot point things on there I think it's something about it that just it says Ikea so here we go, top down. This is the banner element. I'm really, really happy with this. I'm gonna change it from all capitals. Um, it's very rare that I use all caps. The only time I kind of do it is in the menu items. Everywhere else, I very, very rarely use all capitals. I just don't really like the way it looks. I'd rather capitalize um, every every word. 
which is what I end up doing with all the buttons here. Uh, I'm just kind of having to play with what text to put in here, what would be the most kind of Ikea-esque text in here. Again, it doesn't really matter for this design, but I wanted to make it look really cool and really genuine. Okay, so now what we're going to put underneath this, I'm not entirely sure. I want to kind of, the balance is kind of over to the right with that big image. So I think if I'm going to put a big image in again, it needs to kind of shift over to the left instead. So again, coming back over to these other websites, having to get some inspiration, that banner element, that long banner element is one thing I kind of considered, but actually I really, really enjoy this, this slider at the bottom with kind of the colored border. Um, I really enjoy and I think the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put in that slider and as I said I'm going to kind of flip the balance the other way um, so I'm going to have the image on the left hand side I think in, originally when I actually make the thing I don't do that and I end up realizing and going oh you idiot and then redo it um, and I have to fiddle with the padding and stuff again I'll get a better picture to put it in here I'm not going to use this one again just for the sake of just getting this design made um, and getting it built I do actually realize here that I have made a bit of an error. Well, not an error, because I sort of went into this thinking that nothing was going to be full width, whereas most of the time, everything I do is full width. I'll always have the page template set to full width, and then I'll put in rows and columns that are container. That's how I always do it. Didn't do it this time around. So now I've got to go back in, change the template to full width, and then put everything I've already done into one row container just so I can have this slider at the bottom of the page full width. As you can see, that, slide, that banner at the top works full width. I think it looks good. Um, but just not what we're going for today. We're trying to kind of, again, like almost defy the convention and put some odd spacing in there um, and some weird different lines because Ikea, Swedish, I don't know. Apparently that's what they're into. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I've just realized again, a bit of a mistake. Um, in order to have that kind of text element on the left-hand side, like I wanted, I've got to do this as two rows, not as a banner. So I'm going to get rid of that and redo it again with the with two columns, one on the left and one on the right. UX built is being a bit strange here, so I'm just going to kind of throw this banner in and then hit refresh and try and rejig it. The text on the left-hand side, I've actually put a banner in there as well. Now, the reason for that is because I want to be able to set both of those, that left-hand side and right-hand side, to the same height. Obviously, you could just put that text in that column directly, but you have way less control over the height of it. And I want to keep those things absolutely locked so it looks like they're one element. Back to Ikea again. Just to nick another image. Um, duh, duh, duh. Yeah, this one here, I quite like the colors on. Can't save this to media to downloads. Damn you, Ikea. I'm going to show the world now how you can nick any photo from any website. Go on Inspect Element, and somewhere in that code, there will be a, a, a link to that website, to that image directly, and you can go and save it. A lot of this, a lot of the time, you'll come across websites where they try and hide it, and so you can't immediately click on Save the Image, but you always can save the image. Trust me. Okay, and this is what we've ended up with. So I've got literally, again, loads of negative space. I've got one piece of text with the name and then a button at the bottom, and that is it. There's no paragraph, there's nothing else. Really, really like unconventional spacing and alignment. I love it, it looks great. Really worked with this kind of style. Anything else, it would look weird and look like there has been a mistake that like the button should be underneath the text or they should both be in the middle, really strange. Really enjoying this Get Inspired section, that looks great. Really happy with how this is coming along. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go and download WooCommerce because I'm really annoyed at the fact that the top right there, those cart icons aren't there, really irritating me. So I'm just going to install WooCommerce uh, purely to get those icons. I'm not going to go through the setup or anything like that. Thanks very much for watching. This has been part one. I'm going to split the video here as I think it's getting a bit long. Part two is going to be the Mega Menu and how we build that with the Max Mega Menu plugin.